Yo, what's up guys? What you're watching right now is seven back-to-back -back shiny Pokemon hatches in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl that I did with RNG manipulation using this newly discovered Blink method. Now, a bunch of tools were created by different people. We have to big, big shout out to Nyart120, created the tool in Japanese that allows us to track these Blinks, find our seed, and even do anything with the RNG. We have Lincoln who translated the tool and everything for us, and both of them are very responsive and helpful in their Discord and the RNG community. And Big Admiral Fish who has created Pokefinder, and that is a tool that we use for a lot of RNG manipulation in all of the gens, constantly updated. Awesome work from those guys. Personal thank to Papa Hefe on his YouTube and Twitch, he hang, we hang out a lot. He's helped me a lot with RNG in general, so he helped me understand these tools, helped me get this, what, helped me get done what I'm doing right now. All right, so yo, what up? We'll go over some of the requirements, the programs, the things you need. Things that you do need are Git, the things that you need are Python, you need a capture card, a webcam, or some sort of way to get recording of your literal game screen to this program, because what this program does is track the blinking of your player character to determine the RNG state, determine the RNG seed, find our frames, find our shinies, get shiny eggs. For the eggs, you need your TSV and SID, which is something that you cannot get without custom firmware unless you do it at the very beginning of your game creation, game file creation. This means that I, my main file, I created when BDSP came out, so I had to get my SID with the help of custom firmware. But from start to finish, if you create a game file and track the blinking of the Munchlax, then you can do all of this without without any custom firmware, without any any hacks, cheating, anything whatsoever. All right, real quick, I'm going to show you exactly what you have to do on your computer to get everything up and going. What you start at the GitHub website. This is where we're going to start. You need Git, the latest version. I'll have a website in my description. 64 Git. 64-bit Git for Windows setup. Quick and easy download. Open that up. Program files Git. There's nothing else you need to check off. Nothing you need to change the name. Don't need to change any of that. Let Git decide. Git from the command line. Also from third party. Use bundled. Open SSH. Use the open SSL library. Check out Windows style. Basically everything that's automatically selected is correct. You don't change any of this. File system caching, enable experimental support for pseudo consoles, enable experimental built in. Those are both opt in things, don't need. We're gonna install that. After that is done, don't need to release it, don't need to view the notes, it doesn't even need to be running, it's just on your computer. Next step is Python. There seems to be a new Python since the GitHub, the GitHub says 3.9.6. I just uninstalled my old Python to show to make, get this footage, and it seems like there's a new Python. It should work fine. Hello, kitty. I'm just gonna download that, and bam, get that open. Now it says add Python 3.10 to path. That is what you need to that is what you need to click. You need to make sure that it is on the on the global path. That is very important. That's a common troubleshoot. If we, if you run into an issue later, even after that checkbox, it's probably your pathing, and it's something that you can go into your settings and change very easily. Install this. Setup was successful. Now those programs are both on my computer. My next step is going to be open the command prompt. Regular old command prompt. We're gonna head over to this. We're gonna head on over to the GitHub again, and we're going to copy and paste these four lines in the order that they appear. The git clone is the first order of business. Type that in. It has received the objects. Then you go to line two, copy and paste that, or you can just type it. I'm a simple guy, and I'm not a Python pro, so I copy and paste. Now we're typing from that directory inside of the command prompt, and we're gonna do the pip install, and psh, Pip install. See these loading bars? This is all good. This is all good. Loading bars. Installing collected packages. Numpy. Pywin32. Pillow. OpenCV Python. This is what you want. Now, it says you are using pip version 21.2.4. However, new version is available. That is fine. Don't need to update. Don't need to worry about that at all. The last and final line is what's going to launch the program. Boom, success. Player Blink has launched. When you when you want to start fresh, you'll X out, command prompt, and then again, I copy and paste this line, but you need to you need to just make sure that you're typing from the project S, from the users slash whatever your computer name is, slash project XS, 
And then make sure that you run this Python GUI script launch and boom. There we go, we got player brink, we're live. All right, moving on. Last quick, easy computer program is the legendary Admiral Fish Pokefinder. Shout out to Admiral Fish, uh, Pokefinder 4.0. I'll have a link in the description. You just scroll right down here, get your prefer preferred operating system, Linux, Apple, or Windows. After that, is I, I just made a desktop folder for it. I just made a desktop folder for Pokefinder. Very easy, just extract it to the folder and then you can launch Pokefinder. We have Pokefinder with Gen 8, the eggs, we have the IV calculator. It's useful for many things in different gens of RNG manipulation. All right, we are now going to move on to a full fresh demonstration and run of how to use the tools, how to set up, and how to just grind out shiny eggs. Here we go. All right, we're finally in the game. I'm doing a capture card demonstration. This is a windowed projector source of my capture card on OBS. I have the Pokefinder, I have Git on my computer, I have Python, and I've ran the commands, so I have player blink that I can access. We're gonna do step one. This is getting the exact IVs of your parents. I'm going to rare candy a branch ditto and a English Spirit Tomb to level 100 so I can see their exact stats. They have to have no IVs, I mean EVs, and be level 100. And then you use the IV calculator tool in order to type in their stats, nature, and figure out the exact IVs. So I'll start here. We're going to go to this drop down Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. The Pokemon is Ditto. You have to look into its stats. It has a characteristic. This characteristic is somewhat vain and it has a relaxed nature, so you need to put that there. Somewhat of a clown. That's me, somewhat vain. Now what I'm gonna do is quickly save my game. And I'm going to boost Ditto to level 100. I already got its nature and its characteristics, so I can actually just look at this. It's level 100, HP 224, attack 132, defense 125, special attack 124, special defense 32, speed 101. Bind IVs, and there we have it. It's perfect IVs. Now we can start to set up the Poke Finder. We can go to Gen 8 tab, go to Egg. Make sure that you have your profile set up, which is your TID and your SID, and your name, trainer ID, in the manager. You can save all that stuff. So, parent A, you go to Gender, and Ditto is actually a gender. Make sure you have Destiny Knot or Everstone if that's the item that you're using. I'm using a Destiny Knot. Make sure you have the correct nature, which is relaxed. Make sure you have Masuda if that is what you've got. And then I will very simply put the parent IVs. Very simply put the parent IVs, which are located right here. Put them, put them in over here. So we got 18 HP IV. 31 attack IV, 13 defense IV, 0.3 special attack IV, 31 special D, and 12 speed. Now, to get my rare candies back, I'm obviously not saving my game. I'm going to restart it. All right, so we're back. Now I'm going into my party. I'm going to boost the level 1 spirit zoom that I've got to level 100 so I can see its exact IVs. Okay, we've got level 100 Spirit Tomb. We're gonna get its nature and its characteristic into the IV calculator, just like before. It's got a, it is a Spirit Tomb. <clears throat> it hates to lose. Brave nature. Current stats. 
eight, four, two, three, nine, two, four, nine, and eight, six. Find IVs. We have our we have our exact IVs, which we will now also paste or right into the Gen 8 eggs parent. Parent be female. Brave. And yeah. 28. 15. 22. 0. 28. 21. Awesome. Phase 1 complete. One quick note as I reset my game to get those rare candies back and begin phase two. Make sure the compatibility of the Pokemon is proper as well, like what, what the daycare man says about them. The two seem to get along, the two seem to get along very well, the two, so that needs to be right. And also the gender ratio of the uh, Pokemon in the red side also needs to be proper for when you're, we're searching for frames. All right, so real quick, I'm just gonna put both of them in to check the, check the compatibility. This is not the beginning of the RNG. The beginning of the RNG is just moments away. The two seem to get along. I just wanted to make sure that that was right. There we go. Okay, so. Beginning the RNG, what you're going to want to do is have the Ditto or one parent. I just at least one of the parents is going to stay in. I'm going to leave Ditto in because Ditto is Ditto. Ditto always stays in. Ditto will stay in. I'm taking Spirit Tomb out. Now, it's important here to make sure you position yourself right. Because we're going to use the step counter for something. We're going to position ourselves one step away in front of the lady. Just like this. I'm going to clear my step counter. What I'm going to do is save. This is the beginning of the RNG. Now, we're going to use a super repel. We're going to walk 21 counter steps up and down. Just like this. Up and down. The 21st step will be landing in front of daycare granny. You can do this really at whatever pace you want. 21. Now we deposit spirits in. That will be an additional 500. We got it. Spirit Tomb's in. Get back for it later. Now what you do is you run out. Leave the daycare. We're going to fly home to Twin Leaf Town. We're going to enter our bedroom. Go into the home, Twin Leaf Town. We're gonna go upstairs. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run that super repel out. We're gonna run that super repel out. And there's just a little bit, there's just a couple little things to talk about here. It goes out at like 200 something. I think just about 200. It's 200, right? There's something to there's something you gotta do for the RNG here, and to use those other tools with the and the, we're about to start blinking. So, what you wanna do is hang out in the bedroom, run out the super repel, running up and down like this. Repel's effect has wore off. Would you like to use another one? It's important that you do not take another step here. In this situation, because my character is facing the wrong way, what I'll say is no. I won't, I won't step, but I'll tap down and that turns me around. Now what I need to do is use something that's registered and then it gives you the text box with Rowan's denial, Rowan's word echoed, there's a time and place for everything. Bring it to phase two where it's right here. You press A once and you leave it here. Now we're going to initiate using the tools and we're gonna find our seed, we're gonna find some shinies and we're gonna, we're gonna learn how this stuff works. So what we're gonna do is get the command prompts, get the GitHub, I showed before. Now we're going to engage Project XS in the command prompt by copy and pasting or typing the second line. 
that we discussed before. And then the fourth line that you could type as well is the GUI launch kitty. Jump it on my lap. So now we have the program up. We have the program up. And what we're going to do is learn how to use the program, see what it does. Kitty might hang out with us here. Okay, so. First thing you're going to do, in the case of a capture card, I'll discuss other things later, but right now we're just doing capture card. We have a windowed projector source launched from OBS. We have player blink up. We are now going to hit this toggle. We're going to go configure config camera JSON. You're going to want to check the monitor window. You're going to want to type with a capital W windowed in that box just to make sure that it is this program is properly searching for this, uh, the blinks, and you know, just this screen and, the, and what's going on here. Now, we're going to low, in, in the bedroom, I have success with a threshold of 0.7. That's how I was able to ironically hit seven shinies in a row. The threshold uh, is different for everyone depending on your, your source. So it exists between somewhere, I would say between 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0.9. I'm 0.7 right now. So that's one thing that I do. Everything else you don't need to touch for now. So we're going to hit preview. And another box is going to pop up. And what we have here is the program in action, the player bring po program in action. It's cap it's pro it's properly captured my window. And what I'm going to do is come over here to the X and the Y and I'm going to move this box. Well, actually, no, I'm very sorry. The very first thing that you do is go to the snipping tool. You have your snipping tool open, and what we're going to do is we're going to get a picture of her eyes. So I snip her head like this, and I'm going to copy, and I'm going to paste that into good old-fashioned paint. We have that in paint now, and we're going to zoom all the way in on her eye, and you'll see what, you'll see what all this is for. This is all so that the program can communicate. What you do is you crop the you crop the eyeball. It's a really crazy and weird thing, I know, but you crop the eyeball. Get it, get it, get it decent like this. What you're gonna want to do is save that. I have a folder. I've been saving it. I just call them Iron. This is Iron One again. Okay, now that I have that snip of the eyeball, it's important. You select eye and then you go to that eye wherever you saved it you need to select the eye so now the program has my windowed source and the eye it's very weird it's a very very crazy program but it's awesome next you're gonna go to the X and the Y and you can use your arrow keys to navigate and move this box this blue box on X you'll you'll press up to move right on the Y you press down to move up and what you want is that. What you want is the red border and the little box showing the blink to pop up. Another thing that you can do is 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 lower this with the W with the W and the H within the height. You can lower the size of the box because what you want to do is capture. See up and down with these, it, it'll change the size of the box. What you want to do is just capture that little eyeball. See right there, this is looking good. This is all in preview mode as well. So I'm gonna stop my preview now that I've set it up like perfect. Now we're going to monitor blinks. If you've monitored your blinks properly, every time, and the threshold is right, every time that uh, your character blinks, it's going to get logged in this program, in this command prompt. As you see, it's working for me. This is something that you can't control. It takes a little bit of time. Uh, it has to blink 40 times. So this is something I'm definitely going to let happen and I will fast forward through it. Okay, it's, we are approaching 40 blinks. We can move along in the process. 
like I said, you can get lucky and this can go fast or this can take forever. You only have to do the 40 blinks once and then you can get multiple shinies, but you do have to redo this every time you restart your game. So now that I have a seed, you can see these letters and numbers that popped up and the advances are ticking away. This is perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. We have a seed now that has uh, entered into the Player Blink program automatically, which is great. What we're going to do is we're going to copy. We're going to copy the, the the lines. It comes in two forms. It comes in four lines and two lines. We need the two lines. Two line, copy and paste, just like so. It's very simple. We're going to take line number one, copy it there. Line number two copy it there. Now our parents are proper. Masood is checked. Everything's right. Gender ratio is. We're going to go over here. We're going to drop down star slash square. This is going to search us for any shiny frame. Just a shiny without any. We don't care about the IVs. I'm not searching for a specific IV. If you want specific IVs, you do. You, you put it in here. And also make sure you have better parents. I have cruddy parents, so I don't care. I'm just going for shiny. Generate. These are all the shiny frames that we have on this seed in this loadup. So now into the next phase. The next phase is the re-identify phase. So we're going to stop this preview and we're going to hit re-identify. And what happens on the command prompt is it only needs six blinks at this point. Once you have six blinks, six blinks, the blinking combined with the seed that we got is going to tell us the exact number of advances that have passed since the uh, seed was created on the game's boot up. So now on the sixth blink here Advances are are in the 100s. So it look this is a great great simulation It's advancing you see it going up one each second. That's great. That's perfect There is a shiny at advances at 201 advances so what you would do is as these advances are ticking away it's approaching, you see it, 128, 129, 130, 131, 132. What you would do, in theory, is make sure that you step out of this text box at the very last second, at the, at the, at the exact advance. That means when advances 201 is on, is, is up, like, like I said, like I just showed, 148, 149, 150. See, I have 51 seconds remaining at this point. I'm going to try and time it perfectly and hopefully get a shiny. So it's going to tick away. And what you need to do, very important, is you hold down. You hold down and you press A to leave this text box. And you want to do that at the exact moment, at the exact advanced moment. It's 178, 179, 180, we're gonna go at 201. The, actually, the way that I got seven shinies in a row was going at perfect timing. So we're gonna try that again. 194, 195, 196, 197, 98, 99, 200, 201, and boom! Usually I got my seven shinies after calibrating that I was roughly one frame off. So my next step is to hatch the egg and check if it's shiny. So we're going to do that. All right, let's see if we got shiny. Boom! Shining Spiritum has entered the channel. I managed to one-shot it. Like I said, I've been doing I've been doing shit like this for a while. But if I did not hit a shiny there, what I would do is level it to 100, input its stats like I did before, get its exact IVs, place them here, and then generate, and then it would tell me if I hit really close, that 201, I would take away the shiny as well. Take away the shiny, and then generate. And then you could see, oh, you hit 202, or you hit 200, or even something worse. In which case, you need to calibrate yourself and pr and make sure that you're doing that last A step out of the rappel in your bedroom 
at the exact right time. And just to confirm, you can look, it's got the relaxed nature. It's right here. Booyah. Just a final bit of notes here. Um, thank you guys for watching. I really hope you can get some shiny eggs. If you need any help, hit me up on Twitch, hit me up on YouTube, hit me up on Discord. I'm very active, I'm full time. I've been streaming every day, long hours, mostly Pokemon content on Twitch for literally over two years. I, I've, I've been a nerd for, for, for certain stuff for a long time. I haven't made a lot of guides. This is my first real in-depth, lengthy guide, so let me know how I did. Um, one last final note, um, the egg, the egg read, there's an egg readme in this, uh, in your, in your files that comes when you download Project X. It literally is all the steps that I followed. Every single step that I followed is in that, is us, is in that readme. And literally, boom, there's step by step. There's step by step what I just demonstrated, the one tile away from the lady, take 21 steps. This is all right here in a text form. There's lots of readmes and information if you like that form. So, uh, a, f a true final note is that if you if you're on, if you're not resetting your game like I did in my stream the other night, and I might upload like my bot or something, but all you need to do is go back into your bedroom and re-identify. You don't need to do the 40 blinks unless you restart your entire game. So you're allowed to save when you get a shiny. You can save your game and then you can, you know. Go back in your bedroom, take another snip of the eye, that's important. Make sure you take another snip of the eye. And make sure that when the repel runs out, that's when the egg is generated and you just make sure the timing is right, like I demonstrated in the video. You would take the other parent out, leave the ditto in. Position yourself in front of the daycare lady, basically restarting the process without the f replacing the 40 blinks with the six blinks being the re-identify so it's that's how i got seven shinies in a row without resetting my game so seriously thank you guys so much i'll be on twitch i'll be around on youtube cannot wait for legends arceus we'll see if there's rng manip in that game either way i'm gonna be grinding the hell out of it i'm a massive big fan of just long grinding so i hope you'll grind with me man everybody thank you guys much love every day and night